and welcome to the stream. Uh, previously on the stream, we had looked at finding a polynomial interpolation to Mars's declination, and we've gotten very close to doing it. Um, not the whole thing, but obviously breaking it up into pieces. Um, so we could continue with that today, but um, that would be dull. So instead, we're going to try using Mars' right ascension and, and find a formula that fits that. And there is going to be a little twist, which is why I avoided the right ascension originally. So let's go ahead and bring up our um, our BC interpolation JL. Okay. And over here we do read the declination in. And I think I'm going to just change this a little bit uh, to be Mars deck. And then Mars RA. Now this is kind of cool. Not cool. This is kind of stupid. I'm going to go ahead and create the, uh, the put the file name. We haven't created this file yet, but we will. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I am dying of Corona. So hopefully if I do have any benefit to you, I probably do not. So don't worry about it. And I think it was 0604 that I put this stuff into. There it is. Uh, oh, I, actually, I do have Mars per hour, so I can just suck it out of there. Um, and it is apparently in degrees. Now, there's one other thing I need to do before I forget. Um... Um, I've actually already done this uh, interpolation for uh, the sun and I think the moon, um, bizarrely, although for the moon it'd be a much shorter period of time. Um, if that is the case, I don't think I used degrees or radians. I might have used like milliradians or something really bizarre, uh, but I need to use the same one because I plan to use the same function to read it. But that's a ver fairly minor issue that we can deal with, uh, excuse me, later on. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to creating uh, the, um, this is in degrees, so we're just going to say Perl, use comma as the separator, and we want the 0, 1, 2, third field, I believe, but we will check that. And because we this is a bzip compressed file, we will do bzcat two and I did control K control yank to bring it back control Y to bring it back just like Emacs okay and we do need to tweak this file a little bit because it will have a couple of uh, uh, and I think you might have seen the problem that we're gonna run into which is the Sun's declination the Sun's right Mars's right ascension uh, loops around from 24 hours or whatever the hell I'm doing 360 degrees to zero degrees because the way we measure uh, longitude Ecliptic longitude is very different from the way we measure ecliptic latitude. They're not reversible. Okay, so we'll call this Mars uh, RA per hour dot text. This shouldn't take that long to create because we're just reading data from an existing file. So I'm just going to babble incoherently. And now we uh, need to, we could use the Emacs we already had up, of course. Uh, but this is just very, very simple here. I think think there might have been an error report in this somewhere, but let's see. I think it somehow got sucked out. Um, because we did have, I think at one point we tried to take the, um, the this is going to take forever. Um, let's do this. Um, so let's go ahead and look for things that are not digits. Again, this is not a perfect test, but this this will, you know, No, okay, so we're fine there. I mean, we're not necessarily fine there, but... Um, oh, I guess... Oh, actually, that's actually okay. That says everything... Wait a minute. This will actually hit something because of the dot character. But now let's see if we hit anything. Nope, this is all good. Okay, so we're going to bzip2 minus v it. V just because we like looking at things being compressed. All right, there we go. So now we're going to see the problem here in just a second. Uh, let's go ahead and bring up uh, Julia, if we can. Again, I really need to do something about the spacing, um, the tight spacing here. I'll make a note of, I think I've made a note of that before, but I, I could definitely, I don't, I could probably make this I want to make it readable for everyone, but while at the same time, um, 
not ha being so cramped for window space. And maybe I could just make the windows smaller or something, but that would require thinking, and I'm not ready to think right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. I will go ahead and create a new window, a new screen for it. We'll say Julia 2, Julia BC, get Julia BC interpret, which I think is the only one there. Uh, blah, 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 blah. There's already a problem. We can handle it, though. Oh, yeah, one problem, of course, is it takes forever to do all these imports and stuff. Uh, so while that's happening, I will cheat, and I will put in... Oh, for one thing, this isn't going to make any sense now. Um, Raz, RA is equals Mars, RA, uh, colon, comma, one. And we're going to see how to fix the problem with the RAs that we're about to have. Um, so actually, I should probably stop this because um, it's not going to do the right thing. Okay. All right, here we go. I maybe should have, like, echoes in there that just tell me what part it's reached. The worst part is going to be basically loading this library uh, because it loads a lot of uh, packages, and Julia is slow about that, which annoys me, but um, a lot of things annoy me. So we're going to um, kind of just wait this out. I'll, I'll do some friendly blabber, babber, blabber, babber. I'll try to pronounce the word babble. Maybe I'm confusing it with blabber. Okay, so now uh, length arrays should be the same as length dex, and they should b both be fairly... And I don't need to keep compressing that. Okay, good deal. And now we'll see the... It's going to be pretty obvious. It's going to basically be, look like a bunch of lines repeating themselves. Na 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 Tis the season, it's not the season to be jolly. It is still June, it's too early. And I am not religious, so it is that. So this should work like it did for declinations, except the pattern's going to be much, much uh, uglier and harder to interpolate until we do a magic fixy thing to it. Um, I guess it's kind of hard to see at this scale, but um, what happens is it basically goes up, resets down to zero, goes up, and then it does have retrograde motion every so often, as you can see. That actually looks kind of nice there. So how do we fix this? How do we fix it so it's continuous and we don't have that uh, break at um, we don't have that break when it goes from 360 to zero? Uh, that is actually not that difficult to do. So the first thing we need to do. Oh, let's see. Now I want to do a for loop here. Oh, how do we do this? I've done for loops before, so I should be... I should know what... I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I never know what the hell I'm doing. Sad. Okay, I meant to do this, because it, it is at one level higher, because all my libraries are at one level up. Uh, so I think we do have a... For, no, we do not. We have a while loop in here somewhere. Um, yeah. Okay. This is... should not be difficult. We're going to call it RA new, and we're going to start it as an array that has just RA zero. Um, and then we're going to do some some wonderful magical. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yep. And of course, I meant RA's one because Julia arrays are one indexed. This is the kind of bullshit someone should fix. Okay, an array new should now just be an element, with one, an array with one element. There it is. Okay, so now we're gonna go through the other elements of uh, of arrays and almost copy them. Um, actually, it's not gonna matter whether we do one, two, or two, two, because it's, it's gonna be the same. Um, gosh darn it. Kingdom for a for loop, but I, I'm actually pretty sure I have not done for loops in Julia, or if I have, I've erased them. But you never know. Um, oh, I forgot about the README, where I did lots of stupid things. Okay, 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 okay. For, do something, and then end. Okay. Uh, hopefully we can do more than one thing. Um, so we'll say diff equals ra's i Blah, 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 plus one minus nope i minus one uh, b 
because we do want to look at the different. Okay, and so now the, the really the only thing we're going to do now is um, is look at this difference. Now, if we did this, um, this should actually literally replicate the array. Let's see if it does. And once again, it should not be using diff as a variable because it is a reserved word. Okay, so this would be just a total copy, which is not helpful, but let's just for, you know, for clem board. Oh, well, that would be good to do it in Julia. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, that is not cool at all. Um, okay, there's a way to push to an array. I know that. Do I want to... Do I want to do that? Uh, apparently... Oh, it's not even... So it's basically push, bang, already new. Um, this is weird because it basically creates the element just in time to push it. But let's see if this works. I'm kind of excited. Um, so let's look at the... Um, Let's look at RA, let's see, how do we get the RAs um, 1 to 10, this should work. And then RA new, 1 to 10, same thing, right? Yo mama. And now I could even do RA new minus RAs and get, uh, and, just to make sure they're all zeros, I can take the absolute value and the maximum of the absolute value, which should be, what? Oh no, I can't do that because uh, this is, this, this is the kind of bullshit I hate. So I gotta map the absolute value and then take the maximum, because it's a list, and that is effectively zero. I would be, uh, I would call that zero. So, um, so good, we lose some floating point precision, which maybe is an issue, but let's see. Now I'm kind of worried. Uh, four times ten to the minus thirteenth degrees is, uh, is really, really tiny. I think I can survive it. So what, how is this gonna, this doesn't fix anything, obviously. Um, so what we do here is though we do an if statement. If, there's two cases here where there might be a big jump. Uh, for the sun, there's only one case. It's when you jump from near 360 to, ze to near zero, to just above zero, which 360 jumping to one, or 359 jumping to one degrees, looks like a negative 358, but it's really <coughs> me coughing. No, it's really um, a, a dec um, an increase of two. Now, because Mars has retrograde motion, it could go the other way. It could be at one degree, jump back to 359 degrees, and we don't want to treat that as a 358 degree increase, we want to treat it as a two degree decrease. So now, what we do is if delta is bigger than, um, and 180 is like the halfway point, so that's pr pretty safe. Um, then we're going to say that delta is, we're going to subtract 360 from it, and I'm going to wonder, hang on, I actually want to see if this has the... Um, the minus equal operator. And one bad thing is I really, if I were smart, which I'm not, I would avoid using, I mean, this this would could be just written as foo equals foo minus five, and that would be more portable because some languages don't have minus equal. But I'm not gonna do that because I'm an asshole. Um, 360, and that doesn't really change it. Um, and if delta is less than minus 180, in other words, it's then we're gonna add 360 to it. So basically, very simple here, um, we do definitely need to do this first. Okay, so this is very simple here. What it should do is create a, um, a continuous, uh, function. Let's see what the hell it actually does do. Wow, I'm surprised. Okay, now let's plot, plot. All right, new. And we are going to test to make sure, to, whoa. And there you can see it's basically a, a straight line. I mean, it's got little wiggles in it. But we have made it continuous from being discontinued. Now you might say, well, you know, that is not really the same. It could be very different. So what should be the case here is that every single one of these uh, differences should be a multiple of 360. Um, let's see if we have a mod operator here. We should. Okay. Okay. I wonder if it does floating point mods. Nice. 
Nice. Okay, it is Pomodoro time, but it's the first one, so we're going to skip it. Okay, so what we want to do here is this. Uh, I want to... Uh, uh, how do I do this? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's very easy, actually. Uh, we take x2 mod x360 because we want to make sure these differences should all be multiples of 360. Give or take a freaking hair's breadth. Damn. Okay. That's <laughs> actually... That is not what I expected. Um... Okay, well, I mean... The problem here is, of course, we have just a little tiny bit of offness that is going to screw us up. I think there was an option to mod that said round up or something. Um... And since there's no pager, we have to go use our screen magic to go back. Um, all right, let's see. If I mean, there should be a round, you know, round down. Mm, not good. Is it that you need to say method equals round down or something magical like that? Function mod does not accept keywords. Well, fuck you. Let's see what it does accept. Piece of shit. Uh, oh. Lovely. The remainder function might automatically do that. Okay, I actually meant to do this. That should be... And then we just do this, and it's still... There we go. And then, if I say round down, this should become nothing. Round up. Oh. Okay, so that's a different kind of rounding. I think that's the kind of rounding that prevents... That's interesting, actually. Let me see what happens if I do that with... Uh... So, remainder... Let's just do it raw first. Okay, and then I'm going to do round up, which hopefully will fix everything. Well, I'm not sure that it did fix everything, but... Um, so now we can ask for the maximum value in this list. Okay, I'm going to ask for the minimum. Yeah, unfortunately that just flipped the problem on its head. Okay, let's go back here. Okay, let's apply, let's do this, we're just going to use mod since it's not... Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to add a little tiny bit to x um, so that if it is very close to 360 but just over, we're going to push it over the edge. Push it over the edge, man! Um, so we'll add 1 e minus 9. Okay. Then we can take the absolute value of all of those suckers, and then we can look at the maximum, and it should be pretty much 0. And that's only because I actually added 1e e to the minus 9. Okay, so that now we have um, ra new, which is a something we can interpolate. Um, because it is a continuous function. So that's that's real nice. And in fact, we should actually be doing that right at the beginning. Because we that this is the thing we're actually going to use is ra new. Okay, so now yesterday we actually came up with a pretty good um, almost way of testing to see which splits and which coefficients uh, work best. And what I'm going to do here is because because Mars' increase in right ascension is almost all linear, we're going to catch a lot of it. Let's see. Um, dead goes to just one. The array goes to um, array new. And I think that's all I need to do, right? Yeah, because I'm not... I just want the whole results. Um, is this too easy? I don't know why I do that every time. Because I'm stupid. It might be because JavaScript allows it, but that's not an excuse. Okay. This is going to be a big answer. Uh, but, okay, there we go. Max... Uh, Okay, so I mean, 
we get off by 53 degrees. Um, the significance here is that in the 100 year period, every, uh, gotta be a little bit careful here. Um, because we've redefined the slope to be minus one to one, uh, a, a jump of one here means 50 years. Uh, so this means every 50 years, Mars increases this much in declination on average, uh, or 191 degrees per year, or that would make its sidereal period 1.88 years. I don't know if that's actually true, but let's see if it is. And we'll use um, we'll use this, although it probably won't understand what I'm asking you. Ugh, that's the side, that's the um, that's the rotational period. I don't think it's going to understand this. Yeah. Um, uh, actually, I probably don't care. Um, or do I? I don't. But I'm stuck. Um, oh, wow. 1.88? 1.88? 1 .88. Um, I think that is good, although technically that this is saying that's its orbit. Um... Okay, let's let's just pretend that's correct. Okay, but you can see there's a pretty big error here, 53 error. Um, we can, of course, um, I probably should have assigned that to something because um, that's important. Let's see what happens if we try it with a degree two. Can, what happens if we try it with like a little pollen? Yeah, it's good. It's good to repeat mistakes too. Let's see. Oh. Holy crap, that's fast. 53 degree error, that should be, no, it is a little tiny bit lower, but just barely. Um, I'm gonna go with three, but it's, it's not gonna help. The problem is you can't get that much wiggle um, with, uh, with uh, just trying to do it all one over the whole interval. Okay. So uh, this is obviously not what we wanna do. Uh, this was just a demonstration. I'm kind of curious what the residuals look like with a degree one. Let's do that. Um, God damn it. Even my history hates me. Um, okay. I'm going to probably have to alias plot. Okay, and you can see the, the, uh, the linear approximation is not fantastic, and that is expected. Um, and you can see there's really no good way we could capture this even with a square. We might be able to hit it with a sine wave, but mm, it's not even a great sine wave. We could probably hit it as a product of two sine waves. Um, a sine wave inside of the period of a sine wave, but that that's more complicated. So let's go ahead and create a little fun function for ourselves now. Our goal is to see, basically put in different degrees and different split lengths of the array and find out how that changes the max regi residual. Um, and this is not going to be a function that's going to be very generic. So um, we'll go ahead and keep it. Um, we'll go ahead and keep it just inside this file. Um, and we'll just do very minimal um, documentation here. Obj uh, deg equals degree of polynomial. Obj n equals split into n pieces. And again, this is just a very quick function for ourselves. Let's make sure I know how to write functions. I probably don't actually. Probably forgotten by now. Okay, so that's what we do here, max residual. Um, and this should be really, really simple. So we're gonna call this variable spool. Spool equals, um, oh, and array is the, uh, is the full array. I'll this. It's the full array that we're going to split. So split is going to be the array. Um, okay, so it's going to be the split array, which we could return, actually. Um, what do I call it? Do I call it ret? Do I call my... I'm just going to call this one ret. Okay. Uh, so this could just be ret split equals 
split array where array goes to object array, the thing you're putting in. Uh, I get the feeling there's something wrong here, am I? Or no, look at uh, and the um, degree of n goes to object degree. Okay, so this is now the array of arrays. What we now want to do is we want to apply map, sorry, map onto this um, list to normal poly, and that will be with the arguments, um, and this is incorrect. This should actually be object n. Uh, of where the degree is going to be the degree that we are given, and the um, let's see, do, 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 do. and the this is the array that we're given. Okay, so uh, hang on. Okay, x goes to this list of polynomials. Da, 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 da. And we apply it to ret split. Okay. So this is going to be an array of arrays. Okay, and I think we can call this ret. Uh, no, these aren't the residuals. These are the um, guesses. I'll just call them guesses. Uh, no, these are the polynomials. We'll call them polynomials. They are. Okay. Okay, so now we have the polynomials. Uh, and what we want to do is for each polynomial... Uh, <laughs> so red polys is the polynomials. I'm pretty sure what we actually want out of that is... Um, the residuals, which will be returned to us. So we, we actually want to take the uh, residuals for each element. And I think this is getting ugly enough. I want to kind of test it before we do anything further. So let's go ahead and do this. And we'll just say ret here to return what, whatever it is. Um, let's see what this does. I think this is going to do the right thing, but you never know. OK, max residual. Come on, baby. Resi whoa, 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 max residual. Um, array deg and n. Okay, so the array is going to be ra new. Wait. Fuck. What is this? Um, let's do it into five pieces just for right now, and the degree is going to be two. This is not going to be very good. Uh, no method matching max, nope, it does not, because this should be a dictionary. Okay. Dict has no field array. Well, I mean, yeah. Did I forget parentheses again? Um... That should work. Mm. There should be no point where I'm trying to take the AR. Let's see what this does. Um, this should be fine. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Type dict has no field array. I mean, that's, that's fine. Sys image at REPL5. Let's take a look at REPL5 here. This is REPL. REPL5 is way the hell up here, so it's not cool. Uh, I guess it means 5 inside of the... Uh, um, Let's run this one step at a time uh, using, you know, we'll just make, let's see. This will be our object. And note to self, be sure to undefine this because it's going to really fuck things up if we don't. Okay. And then let's just go through these steps one at a time. 
Uh, red equals dicks, that's a totally separate, should not break anything. This should work. Okay. Okay. Hmm, so let's see what this does. I think maybe there's just a, a glitch here. Yep. I know what I did wrong. I'm an idiot. I mean, you know that. But again, with dict, it's not a function. It is, a, uh, it is an array. It is a type of array, so you uh, bound it with array parameters like this. Or you don't. I mean... Well, it doesn't matter. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, and let's go ahead and put three spaces before this. Okay, so this should be what I meant to do. I should probably write down the call that I'm using here because I'm going to forget it eventually. I already have. Okay. So this is what I want, and bizarrely enough, this should still work because even though I redefined obj um, and ret, they will both be local. Let me actually, though, undo that. I don't know if you can unassign something, but you can set it to an empty string. So, which, if you know, if it remains that, obviously we will see some we will see some issues. Um, nope. God damn, I'm bad at this. It's dict. You create a new little dictionary, send it over your way, and then you tell us m m m it's not already unhappy. Uh, to an object of type. Object of type pair string array to an object of type dict. Closest candidates are. Okay. So first of all, let's make sure it's happy with this, the, the, the arguments. Um, do I need parentheses around that? I'm almost sure I do now that I think about it. Um, God damn, I am stupid. Oh, you actually need to clear it like this, and then you can do, um... All right, hang on. So it is parentheses. <sighs> okay, first of all, let's see if we can create the actual freaking dictionary without doing that. Okay, good. So we can do that. So over here, with much fuckery, we do this, and we do need this to be a parentheses. And then we don't need the parentheses there. Um... So the problem might have been right here, where I... No, actually, I did this correctly the first time. Okay. This, well, let's break this again. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Unexpected syntax end. That's not groovy. Uh, so where am I effing this up? Do I just need a semicolon here? Uh, let's see. This ends off this nicely. This ends off this nicely. And this ends off this nicely. So this whole thing should be a nice, lovely function. Okay. 
Oh, 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 oh. Pomodoro time, and I'm going to take it this time back in two and two, but this was the problem right there. And we are almost back. And we are back. Almost. Um, and we're definitely back now. All right, so let's see what happens if we do this. Okay, good, it at least took it. And maybe I just did a typo or something earlier. Nope, still does not like it. All right. Um, well, first of all, let's see if it accepts this, which it did earlier, so don't see a problem with that. Um, the only thing I can see here is... No, it's the object. It's the object array. All right, let's do what we did before. Um, set obj equal to this and run through the steps manually. So this just creates an empty dictionary. Uh, this, which I probably need to unsemicolon. This is where the error is, so let's take a look at this. Um, so this is where the error is. Okay. Dict has no field array. Okay, well, let's even go simpler and let's just say um, is this valid? Okay. And I'm kind of cool with the fact that it doesn't have... Oh, 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 oh. Okay. So that... It's not complaining about the dictionary I'm creating. It's creating about the one I'm sending in. Um, hmm. Certainly looks like it has one, doesn't it? Okay. Oh, fuck doodle. Do I mean to do this? I do. Okay. Do I get away with that in other... Um, no, I don't think I do. Alright, so it's not, it's not a property like in JavaScript. Uh, la 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 la. And could I do a replace here? I actually could. I'm not going to, but I could. And let's see, was it, are there any dots? There's dots there. Oh, actually, then this documentation is not correct. Because it seems to imply that the object will have fields. Uh, which is not... Okay, I, I'll make that a to-do. Uh, object key not object dot key since ladder will not work in Julia. It will work in JavaScript, but we're not in JavaScript, so screw that. 
Okay. So now, are we ready for the magic? The function of piles, and now let's see what this does. Map is not, okay, that's actually true. Um, okay, so red split should be an array of arrays. Uh, but let's see what's going on here. So maybe I'm, it's not happy with my, um, maybe it thinks my function is not cool. Okay, so that, that's a fine function. Ret split should be an array. Uh, an array of arrays, in fact. Um, not a dictionary. It's a dictionary element. Okay, let's see what RET looks like right now. We're going to go... Jesus Christ. Alright, let's do this. This is the part that apparently does work. And I really need to stop putting semicolons everywhere. Uh, it's RR. Array of arrays. Um, oh, so split array actually does return a dictionary. Um... So what we actually want is not return split, we want return split RR. I'm kind of curious if there's more than one way to get that. So this is the way I would think it would work. Yes, good. This is the way... no, okay. That's fine. We, again, really are being kind of silly if we do it that way. So this doesn't even do the job yet. I just I'm glad I tested first, though. All right, one more time, and this should now just give me nothing. Uh, let's see. Now this one, a bit of a puzzler. I think object is still defined correctly, meaning incorrectly. Cannot iterate a generator, blah, 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 okay. So it doesn't like the way I'm trying to create a dictionary somewhere. Yep, that's, that's not right at all. Um, so the list of normal poly takes a dictionary. Okay, yeah, that is just hideous, actually. Um, okay. Mm, okay, hang on. List of polynomial takes a dig, dig degree option, and the X, I don't know what the hell that is. I mean, that's the target of the map. So, not cool. Um, takes a poly, takes a residual, does it take an array? Uh, hopefully it does. Um, yeah, it does. Okay, so it takes, okay, so that's good. Um, mm, let's see. So that's the array and the number of pieces... Why do I have an X in there? Oh, oh, sorry. This is the this is the wrong one. <laughs> this is fine. Um, this part is an array of five arrays. Um, did you tell me if I do this? Nope. Okay, cool. So that is an er uh, an element of five arrays, and I want to apply to this the function that takes. Um, for each array, the array is x, uh, the list of poly where the degree is, and the array is x. That's what I meant to do. Okay. Rock and roll. Still, still not really doing what it needed to do, it just, this is still just getting it to do, to not break. Yes, okay. So the polys are the very, there should be five polynomials here. Uh, 
Um, and among the five polynomials, there should be a max residual in each one. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, actually, sorry. I said among the polys, didn't I? So this is polys, and then I would have to map x goes to x uh, max res across the result of this. Ta-da! So from all that, we can glean the maximum, which in this case is 53.32. Again, it's not... We would sort of expect it to be that like that. Okay, so here we go. Map all that onto this. Um, and then ret... This is actually the only part we care about. And it's actually should be called max max res. So what we do is we take... Um, so, so we have a bunch of polys here that is ret polys. Um, and for each of these ret polys, we'll have a residuals field. And, um, and we're mapping it on to ret split. Oh, ret polys, because we already decided to name it that. Okay, so this should give me an array of maximum residuals. And then if that works, we are actually almost good to go. Let's do this. Do this. Um, so I want to look at the max res feature of this, which I, I'm pretty sure is exactly what I think it is. No. It's still an array of arrays because mm, that should not be the case. So I've got a bunch of polynomials here. Oh, um, but hang on. Ret polys is a list of polynomials. Each of them have a residuals field. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't want the residuals. I want the maximum res. Doi. Um, yeah. This is fun. This should give me a list of maximal, maximal residuals. Okay. There we go, and then all we really need from this, which is max max res, is the maximum of this list. And to hell with the semicolons. I, I am opposed to semicolons. I am I am uh, removing them at this point. Um, okay. So now let's boogie down and see what we're doing here. Okay, and we, it's okay that we had all this other information that we, we're not going to use it right now, but we do need to use it eventually. So the maximum resolution when we blit it in 5 with a degree 2 polynomial is very bad. Let's see what happens if we go to 25. Um, how can that be worse? I guess it could be. Um, we do have like 100 years here, so let's see if we can go to a, like 100. Okay, that's still not great. Um, I guess the one other thing we kind of want to be able to do is um, is plot our actual data uh, against the, the guess data. Um, so let's see if we can do that. Um, and that may be a little bit tricky because we have multiple polynomials now. Um, but it is worthwhile doing. Um, but let's see how we would do this. This might be actually non-trivial. Uh, I thought it would be a very trivial thing to do, but because each of these polynomials now re represents, roughly speaking, um, one hundredth of the whole function. Um, so... I mean, I guess we could do some sort of, like, combined poly function, um, given a list of polynomials. Um, and the other bad part is the last one is a little bit short, which could be an issue. Okay. So let's boogie down and get down to a thousand. Um, 
And now we're starting to see some real uh, progress. And let's see if we can make it to degree three. That's that's pretty damn good. Let's see if we can make it to degree five. What happens? <whistles> that's approaching the limit we actually need. Uh, let's see if we do two thousand. What happens? Okay, that is very very good. Let's probably do that with. Okay, not so much. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and, so this is, uh, we can do this with dex, by the way, too, uh, obviously. So if we do this with dex, we get, uh, residual of, it's pretty small. These are, in, these are all in degrees, so, so this is a good, uh, good small number here. Um, very nice. It would now, of course, be nice to see them, uh, plotted against each other. It sounds evil, actually. Um... I think actually one of these functions like list split or something, split array, um, actually does return uh, what the, no actually it might not, it might not actually. Okay, so now we have a way of doing right ascensions and declinations and estimating them, and we can see it's actually a pretty good, pretty good estimate here. Um, now the things we need to do here, let's go ahead and, um, I think I already put it on my to-do list, but it's in the readme stream to-do list. Um, and one, one issue here is we actually need to, um, uh, see how I did it in the, uh, solar, I did it in the other, uh, in the other library. And is there a, god damn it, oh wow, I am so smart. Solar interp. Um... Wow, this is pretty good looking shit here. I mean, solar RA interp equals this. Um, what it doesn't tell us, of course, is uh, how to interpret this stuff, which is actually, um, which is actually, ugh, okay, I think, because I think that's gonna be in a BC lib or BC lib staging. And I really need to move some stuff out of BC lip staging. Okay. Given an interpolation object and a value of x from the corresponding value of, of y. The interpolation object. Okay. The value of i, okay. Um. Okay. Object interpolation. So each one is considered an interval from like. So the whole thing is in it. Um, hang on here. Okay, so these are the integer and fractional positions. Um, oh, yeah, okay. So it just basically goes to. The, so this is actually from 0 to 1, not minus 1 to, to 1. Um, Okay, so it basically finds each interval is considered from 0 to 1, uh, and you go to the pause ith uh, interval, the uh, pause ith member of the big array, uh, and then uh, you look at how far you are, and then you just compute the, uh, the sum. Now, the, the issue here is, still does not tell me what units the solar interp array is in. Um, and the mod is probably just for 360, but it's obviously not in degrees, um, or is it? Um, okay. So now I'm pretty sure this is not going to do what I want, because, um, I'm all, there's nothing in here that's going to do what I want. But, this should have an impact. It won't, but it should. Somewhere I'm actually using this data. And I think I'm actually using it in Discord, pa uh, Discord pa uh, GitHub pages. So let's go there. And if I am... Um, Would it be in Heliacal? I mean, it doesn't need to be there. Okay, so it is, but it doesn't need to be. 
All right, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. We are almost back. And we're back. Okay. Um, I think it's going to be the index file. Yeah, okay. Uh, God, this is ugly. Um, let's see. Okay. Okay, that's fine. It's going to probably do its con um, its work in nowhere. God damn it! <sighs> Big cities, bright stars. Somewhere it's got to do the fucking actual work. Uh, let's see. Um, ah, I put it right at the end to fuck with people. Okay. Find heliacal date. That's kind of cool. Is that one of my functions? I guess it must be. Mm. Oh, script. That's, that's actually where most of the work gets done. In, in REPLs. So this is probably where he did it. Okay. Update city, update star, star info, binary search. I already had a binary search function. God damn it. Um, find heliacal date. Okay. Okay, sun info, which is getting closer to where we need to be. Um, okay. Aha! So whatever it is, it's multiplied by a million. Um, X is this value, which is fine. Okay. So is this information in millionths of degrees? And does it say? Okay. So this is the declination. If it's in millionths, it's going to be minus 4.02. And the starting date is... January the 1st, so it's kind of, the sun's position then is actually like minus 23. Um, and these, uh, unless, 
unless no 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 this has to be the constant term okay which means when x is zero in the middle of this interval or the beginning of this interval this is the value so mm. and each of these is a weak so minus three, minus two, minus two, 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 minus five, minus one z -z -z becomes positive. Uh, what's the biggest it gets to be? Two, two, nine, because I know the biggest value of the um, of the sun's declination is twenty-three degrees, roughly. Three seven, three nine, four zero. Oh. Okay. Now clearly I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Although I did apparently at one point. Um Yeah. So that number represents hang on. Oh, am I doing a continued number here? No, I don't think so, right? This is this line and then comma. Okay. Right, right, right. So this is actually 408353 is the biggest number we get. It, that's, a, that's a weak number, but... Um, how does that, roughly speaking, how does that represent... Um, I mean, it, you know, it's 23 degrees, but... I mean, there is a number here that is very, very close to being interesting, and that's 3600 times 6. Or... times 5 would not really be useful. Hmm. Okay, well, we do know that whatever this number is, if you divide it by a million... Oh, is that radians? That might be radians, actually, because there's 57 degrees in a radian. Yeah, that's radians. Okay. So, for whatever reason, I decided to store the sun's position in micro-radians. And also, I decided not to... Um, not to mention that, apparently. Um, that would be really helpful if someone had said micro-radians. Yeah, that would have been really nice if someone had, uh, if someone had said micro-radians somewhere. I'm going to do a quick check to see if there's anywhere in my documentation where I said that. Um... Because that seems like it's such a useful thing to have, to you know, to tell people. Um, and I know you can't see what I'm doing on a different machine. Uh, <laughs> nope, apparently nowhere do I mention that. Okay. Uh, this, however, is pretty convincing that this is in microradians. So let me go ahead and fix... Now, it appears in more than one place, and it's not a symlink, I don't think. So, um... So I need to fix it in more than one place, which is not cool. Um... Actually, let me see where it is, uh, overall, I, and I can do that from... Uh, from my other machine, unfortunately. It is... Ooh, nowhere. Okay. I obviously didn't look for it correctly. Okay. BC Solar Interp.js. Oh, I did it BC Interp Solar. I flipped it. And it's in a lot of places, but. Um, I'm going to be a little bit, and I only fix it in words in Git. Um, holy crap. Okay, there's only really two places I need to fix it. Um, units are micro radians. 
for both. And I guess I might as well fix Lunar Interp, which I assume is also Micro Radians. And then I need to fix it in one other place. There's, it's actually broken in more than one place, but I think the only place where I can actually fix it, where I need to fix it, uh, is here. Da -na -na -na. Okay. Need to install micro radians. And I'll just cut and paste that into this one. And then I'm going to close up these files because they're freaking big. Okay. Let me go ahead and push that to Git real quick. And again, there's the, the, the issue of whether microradians are better or worse, and, and in this case, I don't care. Um, but we do need to fix this. So what we need to do here is, um, uh, so decks are right now given in degrees, I'm almost sure. Or I can just ignore them. Um, to convert from degrees to radians, uh, we need to do um, degrees per radian. Um, which is 1 over 57 something, but I mean, we, we need to do it in a much better way. Uh, let's see if we have the value of pi here. Let's see if we can talk about pi. Okay, what about pi plus 4? Okay, good. Um, and we probably have Euler's number 2, but we don't, we don't really need it. Okay, so we take dex, uh, divide by 180, multiply by pi, that should give us radians. And this should give us micro radians. Um, so now, what we would say here is and like this, and now of course the problem is we're going to get our uh, error, but errors in in micro radians as well. But you know. Only so much you can do. Oh shit, didn't mean to do that. Okay, so dex is now correct, hopefully. RA's is now correct, hopefully, and I need to do RA new because that's the one we really want. Okay, so let's go ahead and do plot plot deck to make sure it is now what we would expect it to be. Mars's declination. No, that does not look correct at all. Oh no, actually it does. Sorry, sorry. So these are micro radians, so. Um, yeah. So 5 times 10 to the 4th micro radians. 1 million, which is 10 to the 6th actually. 0.05 radians divided by pi times 180. 2 degrees. Oh, this is actually Mars's ecliptic latitude. So it doesn't stray that far from the ecliptic. It's ecliptic longitude. Uh, well, let's take a look here. So ecliptic longitude should go pretty much from uh, 0 to 2 pi times a million, uh, which it does not appear to do. Uh, that is not cool. And I think I know what's wrong, actually. Um, because RAs is now in microradians, uh, this needs to be in microradians, too. So, 180... So this is actually just pi radians, so pi times 10 to the 6th, and negative pi times 10 to the 6th, and the change we make to it is 2 times pi times 10 to the 6th, or minus, or yeah, same number, 2 times pi times 10 to the 6th, I'm already regretting having made this change. Radians itself is not a bad change, I'm, I'm actually okay with that. Um, but micro radians might be overkill. And I think I did it originally, um, there we go. And I'm suspicious, this is, okay. Oh, right, right, because now we're actually not, um, we're, we're making it continuous, so that's fine. Uh, for RAs itself, it should be between zero and, 
Uh, yeah, 6.28 times 10 to the 6th. Very good. Okay. So micro radians, radians is fine. Mi micro radians is a little bit, a uh, little bit country. All right. So this is obviously going to give us some huge errors. Uh, and again, nine hundred six. Okay. Let's make a note here to ourselves. Um, and this is we can push this into um, the formulas because it's only for this file that we're doing this. And this is a this is a useful thing to have for this this file. In fact, it's kind of the purpose of this file. Okay, um, so we have to at some point need to say what our desired accuracy is, uh, and that is going to be, we'll put it here, but we're going to compute it. 360 divided by 262144 divided by 2, that's in degrees, um, times pi over 180 times 10 to the 6th. <laughs> Let's see you do that. Not you, Julia. Uh, so let's say 12 microradians. Okay. And let's see, that's probably a nice number to work with than what we had before. So clearly this is way not going to work. So if we, 100 points, 2 degrees, still way, way too big. 3, still way too big actually. 1,000 maybe. And now we're getting down to numbers that we can actually sort of understand. So five, fifth degree, <laughs> 30. I'd like to do it with fewer degrees, maybe 2,000. Fourth degree, that's it. If we do it, 2,000 polynomials of degree four, um, it'll work. Now, of course, the question is, how do we put those polynomials uh, that presumably do, do such a good job of, oh, I guess the other question is, how do we how do we um, how do we compare um, our how do we compare our plot to the actual data? Sometimes it's just nice to look at the data, and or you know we can look at the residuals, but whatever. Now, one thing I meant to check earlier is um, this gives us a lovely plot, which I think is fine. But can I actually assign that to something? Okay. And now can I just say like P1 and it'll just give me that plot? Nice. Now can I do this? And then... Okay, so I can actually treat plots as first class objects um, and then save them for something. So I could actually have a function that returns plots, uh, which could be very useful. Um, so each of these polys things actually does return two things. Uh, I mean a polynomial, obviously. Um, the, and the list, uh, that actually should be doable. Um, cause, um, okay. Okay, we're gonna do this a little bit ugly. So we're gonna say these are the max residuals. I, I think it keeps stuff in memory because this is gonna be really ugly. So here are the polynomials I'm getting. Okay, we'll just pick one of them. We'll pick this fourth polynomial. Um, and so now I should be able to plot um, Okay, so this is the fourth polynomial and this is the polynomial, not the ploy, the poly. Um, the ploy is something very different. Um, No, because this is actually a function. So from minus one to one. And of course we can't call it plot. Okay. Um, pretty linear as we see. And now we want to plot on top of it going from, gotta be a little bit careful here, uh, polys, um, Okay, actually, hang on, it returns the max res, the polynomials, the counts, and the residuals, but it doesn't return the array you sent it. Um, which is not a bad thing, but 
Um, means I can't do what I want to do here. Poly uh, poly 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 polynomial time. Pomodoro time. Back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. Give me actually one second when I said that I lied. Okay. Now the only other issue here is our interpolations are from uh, negative one to one, whereas the code that I've written for JavaScript assumes they're from zero to one, which is different. Um, I'm not actually sure minus one to one is the best idea either. Um, I hate changing library functions, um, but that doesn't mean I won't do it. <laughs> I'll just hate myself for it. Um, and I don't see this as being a big change, actually. I mean, the code won't have much of a change here. And I say that, and it's probably going to blow up in my face. Uh, the other issue is, uh, can we, you know, once we have these polynomials, um, okay, hang on. Um, okay, can we get them into JavaScript format? And it appears that the format they're using uh, is actually kind of nice because it's sort of the same format that JavaScript has that I'm using, which is lowest order first and then going on to the higher orders which are usually smaller. So is there a coef function? Coefs? All right, let's see if we have a, ooh, I um, didn't mean any of those. Okay. Um, what can I get out of this uh, polynomial? And I, I get the feeling they're not gonna quite tell me. Um, Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and make this this. Okay. Wait. That should be just a pure polynomial. Okay, whatever. Um, let's just call this T1443, and I know I should be writing this down somewhere. What can I do with a... Oh, coefs. That is pretty damn close to what we need. Um, okay, and this must be the right ascension array because the linear term is huge, whereas the constant term is, is fairly small. Um, so if I do a print, which is kind of what this was, but not exactly... Oh, hello! definitely need to write this down. This is the gold. This is exactly what we need. Um, once we fix the zero to one thing, that's not what we need. Um, let's write this down. T1443. And then all we have to do is print T1433 coefs and booyah, we're golden. Actually, I wonder if just printing T1443 would work. Probably not. Okay, that's fine. Um, and that's it. That's literally what we need. 
Um, we should do that with all the polynomials, which is fine. And can we get... Let's see if stir does that, because we might need to combine the strings. Although I'm very happy with... Ooh. Um, string? I get the feeling this isn't going to work. Um, and I'm wrong. Okay. That, that's interesting. Um, hmm. Okay. I'm getting too deep in here because we do need to make a couple of changes first. Um, so we can use the same technique. Oh, the other thing we need to worry about is how much space this is going to take up. Um, and for the, f and let's go over here and look real quick. Uh, for solar interp, we had 523 points of order four. Uh, for lunar, I guess we have a smaller time frame. 5,846 points of order four, and that's probably closer to what we're going to need for Mars. Um, and the time frame that was covered here is going to be, maybe it's pretty good actually. Oh, it's actually not bad, 215 to 2025. Um, and that's not actually too bad of a size, 341,000 bytes. So we might be able to pull this off with Mars uh, and get some decent, uh, decent data going. Of course, we want to do this one not just for Mars, but for other planets. We obviously do some testing once we've done this. Um, and of course, our final goal was to get that uh, get that big ecliptic map, uh, you know, chopped up, which we've done, and then re-glued together so we can uh, we can uh, treat it as an image that we can scroll through using Leaflet. Okay. So all of that, but but first, but first. Um, but that's boring. And that is interesting, but let's let's kind of not look at that for a sec. Um, okay, so you definitely need to put a to-do here. Interval is 0, 1, not minus 1, 1. And that actually is going to require a little bit of... Well, it shouldn't be that bad, actually. But anyway. Um... So, let's just see what some of the other stuff. This is just me babbling inco more incoherently than normal. Um, and I did actually do this a little bit. I did show you guys how we do, why polynomial interpolation works. Um, oh, we did figure this out too. I forgot how though. Um, oh yeah, this was because we were trying to get uh, uh, the ecliptic of the date and the uh, equator and um, something else of the date, which is different than just getting the ecliptic, which is uh, which is quite uh, quite fixable. So session saving in Emacs. Mm, um, it is something I want to do, but we don't really need to. Um, don't need to look at that right now. Quantum, oh, actually, there was someone who said, oh, there was someone who said they were going to get back to me on June 1st because they wanted to learn, I don't know if it was quantum computing or something else, uh, and they have apparently um, failed. They've apparently not done that. Um, I was going to look into a Perl program that lets you seek inside of a PNG file, um, but I think convert handled enough stuff for me. Um... And then there's the COVID data we could look at, uh, but again, that's getting kind of boring. Um, planet trails, wow. Why crunch? Oh yeah, we were also gonna look at creating, um, which we still could do actually. Um, creating uh, images that represent many, many digits of pi or uh, the, you know, Euler's number or the square root of two or any one of a sort of a million different things that people are, are interested in um, using co different colors. I think I said the Kelly colors. Um, and, and again, because primes repeat themselves in patterns, that's not true, sorry, composite numbers repeat themselves in patterns, a subset of them do anyway. 
um, we we could uh, just use mod 30 instead of having to do all of them, which would actually make things easier. Uh, the other thing we're going to look at is the angle that the sun uh, of the sun, um, and that might be something to do in Maxima or in uh, Julia. Maxima might actually be good for this because uh, they did it in Mathematica, and it's a, it's a real simple equation that basically relates, uh, you know, the declination, right ascension, your latitude and longitude, and the time to where you will see something. Uh, and from that you can you can base the you can look at the, where the sun's going to fall. Um, and so on, and that could answer that question. I was at one point going to create my own time zone. Um, wow. And then see if I could adopt it to other calendars that already exist, but I'm not sure that's actually, um, I said there might be limits there. And then I said, you know, LD preload, all this crap. Um, An island inside an island. I thought I answered that one. Because that one I actually got sort of interested in. And maybe I started answering it and never got around to doing it, which I, which I do a lot, by the way. Um, uh, that's not good. Wow. Maybe he... Great, so I'm answering the question now. Um, all right, I think I have actually it now uh, has been deleted, so I'm going to answer a question that no one's asking. I'm going to look into a logarithmic temperature scale. Um, um, let's see. Oh, yeah, someone suggested that I create in JavaScript a draw circle function. Uh, to make it easier to draw functions. Um, wow. Uh, Wikitel, which is a quick way to put pull data from Wiki, uh, which I've sort of done. But I think that the file, even when it's squashed, is too big. Okay. Wow. Okay. Uh, and this is no longer occurring. You still get deliveries. Okay, you know what? It's been about an hour and a half. I can't think of anything else to do unless there's someone in the lovely audience, which I don't think there is, actually. Um, I think I'm going to call this a stream. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye for now.